And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at a title that was a Kickstarter title. We're going to look at Zong Shi from Griffin Games. Now this is a game for three to five players. It's going to play in about 60 to 90 minutes, uh, maybe even a little faster if you have a fast group. And it is a kind of worker placement game insofar as you only have two workers, uh, each of whom can do different things, but one worker who's less efficient than the other worker. Uh, in addition to this, there's going to be a little bit of a tech tree type of thing where you can uh, get different masteries, better your uh, abilities to use throughout the game in order to make it a little bit easier for you as you go. Uh, so real quick, why don't we take a look at what you get inside of here. Uh, we'll take a look at how the game plays, and then we'll come back here and we'll get my final thoughts on Zongxi. The first thing I want to do before I get into the actual game itself is compliment Griffin Games on their fantastic insert design here. Uh, as you can see here, there's a nice little tab to lift all of the stuff on the top of the box out. And when you do so, you're going to get all these boards out of the way. You're going to see they have this awesome insert here that holds everything in its own little kind of area. You have areas for all of the figures. You have an area for the bag with the tiles in it. All of your little sheets that are going to tell you how to play. And even a little spot for the Buddha. And this is all held in by a plastic overlay that keeps anything from shifting around. Just a really nice touch to a well-produced game. So here you can see the main board and the majority of the components for Zong Shi. And as I said, this is a worker placement game. Each player only has two workers, however. They're going to have a master, which is a bigger worker like this, and they're going to have an apprentice, which is a smaller worker uh, of a similar type, but he's He's the master's apprentice. Uh, and your master is going to be a better worker than your apprentice. But basically, everyone has these two workers, and they also have their own little player board, where they're going to try and be finishing projects in order to earn victory points and get abilities. On this board, there's also an area for exchange uh, tiles that you can get throughout the game, so you can swap your tiles that you earn. A spot for five different materials that you can hold, and you can only hold five materials at once. And a place for a project that you are tr currently working on, with a timer track that your master will go on to, in order to keep track of how many turns he's been working on that project. So in the game, basically what we're going to do is at the beginning of each turn, we're going to seed these jars here with different goods. And there's going to be a number of goods on them, equal to one more than the number of players and one less than the number of players, depending on which jar it is. After this, you're going to go around, and you're going to go into master and apprentice actions. And as I said, you have those two different workers. They're right here, and each player has two. And they can do different actions, the master always being better than the apprentice. And the one thing only a master can do is a, only a master can start a project. And that's these down here and these two up here. Now, the projects are going to have different requirements. You can see here we have the merchant statue. And it's going to require a white, a green, and two yellow in order to start this project. Maybe a little hard to see, but it's also going to give you an ability that says you can draw a random material from the bag anytime your master goes to the marketplace. So when you get this, you're going to pay these goods, you're going to place it on your board on the current project in work thing, and you're going to look here and it says it takes two turns. So your master would go onto the two turn spot. And at the end of each turn, after everybody's taken their actions and you've resolved everything, he's going to slide down until he slides down to zero, at which point your project, which is right here on this in, this pro in, in progress part, is going to move over to the completed area and you will have that ability for the rest of the game, as well as the two victory points that the project provides. So as I said, only masters can start projects. And you'll see these ones here all provide you with some type of benefit. The two master work projects up here provide you with more victory points, they take longer to complete, but they have no benefit and they require more materials, such as three gold, two ivory, and one brown. I don't remember what brown is at the moment, but a brown resource. The other areas on the board can all be visited by either the master or the apprentice, and they are as follows. At the top left of the board here, we have what's called the respectful visits area. There are all these uh, different ty types of officials or scholars, elders, and merchants that you can visit. Pay the associated resource, so you have jade, bronze, I think, ivory, and gold. And you can pay these resources in order to influence these people, which will earn you victory points at the end of the game. And if you're the first person there, is going to give you a benefit, but only if you send your master. So when you go here, you can either send your master or your apprentice. If you send the master, you can contribute to multiple people at the same time. And when you contribute, you're going to have to contribute a some amount of these goods. So let's say you want to go to the scholar and contribute to the scholar. You can pay one, two, or three jade, and then you would put out one, two, or three marker to show that you paid that much to that person. The master can influence multiple people at the same time. So let's say you want to do the scholar and the elder. 
The trick here is that you have to pay an extra good to each of them for you wanting to influence them. So if you wanted to pay two jade to the scholar, you're actually going to have to give him three jade. And let's say you wanted to give one ivory to the elder, you'd have to give him two. In addition, you're going to get these tiles out here if you send your master, and you're the first one to send your master, that give you a benefit in the game. This one here is going to let you pay less for one of these swap tiles. This one here is going to let you keep whatever gift you gave to the official, and so forth and so on. When you send your apprentice, he can only influence one person, and he cannot get any of these benefits. Moving over to the marketplace, we can see that there are goods tiles out here, and these are the goods you're going to need in order to give them up to the scholars or to pay for your different projects, to get your pawn swap uh, tiles, or to get cards from the temple. And when you place here, you can either place a master or an apprentice again on either of these two spots. Masters are going to keep going around in circles, so each player that places here is going to get a tile for placing their master, and the first person in player order gets to choose their tile. Then the next player, if they had a master, would choose their tile. After all masters have gone once and chosen a tile, any apprentices that are there get to take exactly one tile, but no more. So this apprentice could take this tile, and he goes away. And now if there are more masters here, they're going to go around in a circle again until all of the tiles have gone. Same thing happens with this smaller group here. But if only one master were placed, for example, it would get all of the tiles that are there, and it would place them on its board in the workshop area, holding a maximum of five tiles. The next area down is going to be the pawn shop. And in this area, you can get tiles that are going to let you swap one good for another. So for example, there's one that says green and white are interchangeable. There's one right here. There's a brown and yellow, and you can see they basically have all the different swapping here. In order to get one of these, you have to give up one of each tile that is shown on the thing, but later, all of your whites can count as green or all of your greens can count as white, and that's kind of beneficial when you're trying to complete different projects for various different things. The final area you can go to is going to be the temple, and when you go to the temple, as a, again, you can place your master or your apprentice. The master was going to get you to draw one of these cards, and these cards all have different abilities on them that modify the game in some way. This one tells you when you can play it. It says play only at the beginning of a master turn, uh, and it says on it that you have the pawn shop owner's gift, and basically that's going to let you use this scroll to pay the material cost and immediately claim any one of these pawn shop tiles. So it lets you kind of act out of turn, uh, and you only have to pay or you don't have to pay the material cost, the card pays it for you. And there are different cards that modify all of the different types of actions and various states of the game. The master is going to let you discard extra boxes of goods that you have from your board in order to draw more cards, but you can only hold four cards at once. So the objective of this game is to build six different projects, to finish six different projects, which takes your master time to work. And anytime you use your master to start a project, he's going to stay on your player board until he completes that project, which means you're not going to have both of your workers at all times. There are some cards that let your apprentice start projects, there are some cards that let you do two projects at a time, and there are all of these cards over here, all of these projects that you can finish that give you abilities throughout the game. So for example, anytime you need to use something with jade, the jade mastery lets you use less. Same thing with the bronze, or the ivory, or the gold. Uh, and all of the other masteries modify some other type of the game. As soon as somebody has built six of these different projects and finished them, at the end of that round the game is going to end and you're going to total up victory points. Your victory points are going to be from all of your projects, the number in the top left hand corner. You're going to get points for visiting one, two, three, or four of these respectful visits area. If you have all of your little markers out, you're going to get eight points. If you only have three, it will be four. If you have two, it's two and one, one. In addition, you're going to get points for leftover boxes of material, leftover scrolls, and you're going to get points if you have all of the different exchange tiles from the pawn shop. And after this, whoever has the most points, by doing all of these things in the best manner, is going to be the winner. And there you have it, that is Zong Shi. Uh, a pretty simple worker placement game. As I said, you're really only managing those two workers at a time, uh, but trying to figure out when to best use your master or your apprentice for different things is a little bit interesting. Now, this isn't my favorite worker placement game. Uh, I didn't really feel a sense of urgency at any time, which is something that I'm frequently looking for in games like this. Uh, it was kind of laid back. Uh, I like the concept of getting those little bit better masteries so that you can more effectively accomplish different things. You can maybe research faster, or you can use your apprentice to do different things. But overall, this is what I would call a middle of the ground game for me. Uh, it's better than I expected it to be, which is always nice, uh, but it's just not a great game in my opinion. It's a very good, very light game, but not something that I'm going to be seeking out to play very often. 
Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. <laughs>